Welcome to topic two, that is public and private sector procurement. But to start with, what is public procurement? And what is private procurement? Where do they meet? Where do they diverge? Why should they exist? Or why do they co-exist? What does public sector procurement do? What does private sector procurement do? We are saying that governments are purchasers of works, supplies, and services from the open market, placing their demands alongside those of private sector. What does that mean? Think about it. We are saying public procurement is the process through which the government buys or gets goods, works and services from the private sector. What does that mean? It means that when we talk about public sector procurement, we are simply talking about the government. The government that should provide goods and services to all the citizens of the country. That is why we are saying that public procurement is the process through which the government buys or gets goods, works and services from the private sector. What does that mean? Government is simply a buyer. And because it is the buyer, it is government's mandate to provide the goods, the works and services. So who provides the, uh, the goods, works and services? It is the private sector. So we are saying that public procurement means the acquisition by government, ministries, departments and agencies, the goods or supplies, services and works, or a combination of the three in order to perform a public function or activity. We are still saying that it is government's mandate to provide health, education, transport, defense, security, you name it, for as long as it is government providing it. That is public procurement. So it means that whatever service the government provides, it is categorized as public procurement. So public procurement can be looked at as the purchase of commodities, and contracting of construction works and services if such acquisition is effected with resources from state budgets, local authority budgets, state foundation funds, domestic loans, or foreign loans guaranteed by the state, foreign aid, as well as revenue received from the economic activity of the state. When the Republic of Uganda built the new Nile Bridge, that was simply public procurement because they used revenue from economic activity of Uganda. They got a loan from the Chinese government to construct that bridge. Therefore, that procurement would be referred to as public procurement. So, what is the role of government? when we talk about public procurement. We are saying that the items involved in public procurement range from simple goods such as stationery, cleaning services or clips, to large commercial projects such as the development of infrastructure, roads, power stations and airports. When the government chose to expand the Entebbe International Airport, that was a public procurement. When the government chooses to construct roads, that is public procurement. The construction of power dams, such as that one at Karuma, that is public procurement. So public procurement is simply the government providing goods, services, and works. So 
what is the objective of the public sector? We are saying that the public sector has got to deliver essential public services, such as the education, the health, the transport, the shelter. By the way, most Ugandans do not know that it is government's role to provide us with shelter. It is not free, but it should be at a subsidized uh, cost. To encourage national and community development. Hey, we should be seeing same development across the country. That when I go to Western Uganda and I go to Karamoja region, I should be seeing the same national and community development. That should be government's mandate. And that is an, ob an objective of public sector procurement. Three, it is supposed to pursue social economic goals. Making improvements in the communities, making improvements economically. How many Ugandans are living below the one dollar or below the poverty line? Is government still providing us with the services or is it still achieving its social economic goals? Many Ugandans I know uh, live below the, the poverty line. So we are saying that in public sector, organizations are owned by the government on behalf of the state which represents the public. What does that mean? That government owns these organizations on behalf of the state. So it means that the organizations or the government that we are talking about are the different organizations. We are talking about ministries, we are talking uh, about uh, government parastatals. Do we even still have any government parastatal in Uganda? Think about that one, but I don't think we have any. We used to have, we used to have UEB, we used to have Uganda Commercial Bank, those no longer exist. But these organizations that represent government or that provide the services on behalf of the government is what we are talking about as the state. And we're also saying that in public sector, the activity is financed by the state, mainly via taxation, as well as any revenue the organization's activities may generate. If you're into private sector, when the government taxes you, when it asks you for a trading license and you pay for it, all those are revenues that government gets to carry out a public sector procurement. The taxes, by the way, every product that you buy has a tax levied on it. So it means you are still paying the tax. Then when you are employed, you understand pay as you earn, because that one is more interesting. 30% of your gross income goes to taxes. And then they misuse our taxes, that hurts. Then we are saying three, the primary purpose is to achieve defined service levels. In public sector, government is supposed to provide services so we should not be seeing privatization of government's mandate. Why should we be having expensive private schools? That is the biggest problem that we have, that the education sector has been privatized and it has, be, uh, has been commercialized and I just do not understand it. But the primary purpose of the public sector is to achieve defined service levels. We shouldn't be seeing a disparity between a child who has gone to the public school and that one who has gone to the private school. But as I speak, hmm, the outcome is very disturbing. Then we're also saying that there has traditionally been little or no competition. In public sector, we should not be seeing any competition. Simply put, we should not be seeing people competing with government to provide health care. We should not be seeing the, pri uh, the private sector competing with government to provide an education. Because that is public sector. 
they are supposed to provide that. So we shouldn't be seeing the private sector competing with the government sector to provide an education. Uh, somebody in the private sector competing with government to construct a road. It is government's mandate, so there should be little or no competition at all. Then we're also saying that the constituency of concerned stakeholders is wider and more diverse, meaning that the stakeholders of public procurement is ev everyone and anyone who is a citizen of that country. So government is accountable to you and I because for the least they are using my money to provide me a service. So they should be accountable to me. I need to know what my money does. What does it do and when does it do it? So what is the private sector? We have said that the public sector is a buyer, which is the government. The public sector provides services. They are supposed to balance social economic developments. So who does government buy from? Think about it. We are saying that in private sector, organizations are owned by their investors and controlled by directors or managers on their behalf. Simply put, the private sector owns resources. And because they are owners of resources, it means that they are investors. They invest their resources to provide what government needs. So the private sector are resource owners. Government is buying from the private sector. So the private sector has the investors, it has the directors, it has the managers of resources. Two, in private sector, the activity is funded by a combination of investment, revenue, and debt. Meaning that the private sector must save, the private sector must get loans, the private sector must look for all sources of revenue to supply government with the resources that they require. Three, the primary purpose is the achievement of commercial objectives. The private sector is there simply to make money. That is why the primary purpose is the achievement of commercial objectives. For them, they are there to make money and they'll always be there to make money. Otherwise, they will not be selling to government. And we are saying competition is a key factor in private sector. Meaning, each supplier in the private sector is looking for business. And where are they looking for business from? They are looking for business from the public sector. Because government is the biggest buyer. So each one is trying to get a business from government. What does government want? What can I do about it? Can I provide the service? Can I supply the goods? Can I carry out the works? So competition in the private sector is very key. And the reason it is key is because one, they own the resources and they need to give it to public sector. Then the other we are saying is, the core constituency served by firms is shareholders, customers, and employees, all of whom are involved with the firm by choice. Meaning, shareholders, customers, employees go to private sector by choice. You choose which company you go to. You choose which company to invest your money. You choose which company to become a shareholder. So it means that the private sector is one that you go to by choice. That is the public, the private sector. 
then what does that mean? That if you are in private sector, then you must have the resources available and you must know how to control the resources that you have so that you get as much business as you possibly want to get from the public sector. So what are the differences between these two sectors? Where do they meet and where do they separate from? So we are saying that one, we need to look at the element of agility. What is agility? In procurement, agility is simply flexibility. So we are saying that procurement professionals working in the private sector often must be more agile and able to respond to change quickly. Meaning that if you are in private sector, remember you are owners of resources. And because you are owners of resources, you must be willing to adapt to what the public sector requires. And the question is, what does the public sector require? Today, it is in need of supplies. Tomorrow, it is in need of services. The next day, it is in need of works. Or today, it is in need of works and services, or works and supplies, or every day, the public sector is in need of any combination of the categories of procurement. Meaning that in the private sector, you must be as agile. You must respond quickly to what the public sector requires which is not the case with the public sector. Public sector, unless you have planned for it, you cannot be flexible because all your requirements, all your needs are dependent on the finances, what you require at a particular time. Two, we are saying that there is a focus on the bottom line. As private enterprises focus on generating profits, Procurement professionals often are constrained by meeting cost reduction targets. In private sector, we've already said they are looking for money, so for them, the reason they exist is profits. A shareholder is looking out for dividends at the end of the day. That investor is looking at a return on his investment. So it means that in private sector, their major objective is profits. In public sector, for them, they're simply there to deliver services. So their main objective is simply delivering a service. So it means that where there is need for supplies, they have to provide. Where there is need for services, they need to provide. Where there is need for works, the public sector needs to provide. Three, we are looking at the number of stakeholders. We are saying in public sector procurement, professionals have a larger group of stakeholders to report to, including taxpayers, members of parliament, clients, and vendors. Hey, that is why Bank of Uganda staff need to tell the general public what happened in the closure of the seven commercial banks. What exactly happened? It is simply the question of the number of stakeholders. You and I are only uh, taxpayers. Then you have the, the members of parliament whom the public sector has to be answerable to. What did they do? How did they do it? When did they do it? And why did they do it? So it means that in the public sector, they have a larger group of stakeholders. Stakeholders are simply individuals or organizations that either have an interest or are impacted by the activities of a particular sector. So in this case, this, the taxpayer is interested in what government is doing. We have the members of parliament who are interested in what government is doing. Then we have clients. We also have suppliers out there in the marketplace. They need to know what the government is doing. And we are saying that in the private sector, the stakeholders are fewer. That is where we have the shareholders, we have the employees, we have the managers, and then we have the directors. 
only those that invest into those uh, companies or those who are employed into those companies. So public sector has more stakeholders compared to the private sector. Before we are looking at bureaucracy, I know you can still remember that uh, procurement cycle that we looked at. In public sector procurement, there is no shortcut to it. There is no red tape. You have to follow it all through, and it means that you need to plan it. From when you do the planning and budgeting up to when you carry out the, pro, uh, the contract monitoring and evaluation. In private sector procurement, remember we've already looked at their ability to be flexible. So it also means that their procurement cycle can be as short as the business deal that is required. It can actually consist of only three stages, simply because they need the, the procurement opportunity. So we are saying that working for a government organization or public enterprise entails dealing with an increased number of red tape or rules which must be adhered to in order to complete a task. Procurement professionals working in the public sector have to place greater emphasis on following policy and acting transparently. The act is there, the law is there, and the PPDA, which is the authority, is there. It has set out the laws, the policies, the procedures, and the rules to follow. So in public sector procurement, no shortcut. So as they are acting on behalf of government, they must be seen to be acting ethically. Yay. So the bureaucracy is simply to check your ethics. So the other is we are looking at the rules and the regulations. And we are saying that in public sector, the decisions of procurement have to be done in strict accordance with the established rules and regulations. When you go to the PPDA Act, we have the rules and the really many. We have the regulations. Now, the regulations explain what the law is. So it means that before you carry out any procurement, you are guided by the rules and the regulations. What do the rules say? What do the regulations say? What does the PPDA Act say? So you cannot make any decision outside the Act. You cannot make any decision outside the regulations. In private sector, in pub, in private sector organizations make their rules. Which rules can be modified, adjusted, added, you name it. But it simply is made to suit what, whatever procurement opportunity is available. Then the other we are looking at diversity of items. When we talk about diversity of items, we are looking at the line of businesses. In public sector, government buys a wide variety, a wide variety of these items. They are buying works, services, and supplies. Now, the irony is that in private sector, each business can only run a particular line of items. What do I mean? You cannot find a business that can supply you with supplies or goods, services, as well as provide you with works. So it means that diversity of items in the private sector is wider. As a matter of fact, the public sector buys everything. They buy works, they buy supplies, they buy services. Private sector can only provide one or a combination of two of those categories. So it means that Specialized stock lists for defined products and service portfolio are required in private sector. That in private sector, you can be a supplier of goods, a supplier of services, or a supplier of works. Or you can only be a supplier of maybe 
goods and services, but not works. So what does that mean? Public sector, wide diversity of items. Private sector, there are fewer, or it is only one. Then we are looking at uh, publicity. They're saying in public sector, confidentiality is limited because of public interest in disclosure of information, while in private sector, confidentiality applies in dealings between suppliers and buyers because of their profit maximization objective. Public sector procurement, we've already seen many stakeholders, and therefore, the level of confidentiality is limited. As a matter of fact, we can only see confidentiality during the tendering process and bid evaluation, only at that point. Anything else outside that should be at the display of the general public. Whoever wants to get access to it should be in position to get that information. In private sector, confidentiality applies in all dealings. And my question is, why? Why do we see a lot of confidentiality in private sector? The answer is simple. One, they are suppliers. And two, they are competing against each other. You cannot reveal information to your competitor unless you are not looking out for profit maximization as your objective. So it means that in private sector, everyone wants to do something better than their competitor in the marketplace. So they will not share that kind of information. They may share, but not one that puts them better or that puts them or puts their competitor at a higher level. Then we are looking at the budgetary limits. And we are saying that in public sector, investment is constrained by externally imposed spending limits, while in private sector, investment is constrained only by availability of attractive opportunities. This is very simple. In public sector, you must carry out budget and planning for a whole financial year. And that budget is going to constrain what you can do and what you cannot do for that entire financial year. So what does that mean? You cannot identify a procurement opportunity somewhere. And because you think it is very lucrative and you take it up, In private sector, we are saying investment is constrained only by availability of attractive opportunities. Simply put, justify the reason for the procurement and the money will be available. So what does that mean? That when you are in private sector, calculate the profit versus the cost. Carry out a cost benefit analysis. If the benefit outweighs the cost, find the money, invest. In public sector, they'll always ask you, did you budget for it? As a matter of fact, they will tell you the money is not there. That is why we are saying in public sector, investment is constrained by externally imposed spending limits. So you can only spend for as much as what you budgeted for in a specified financial year. If you do not budget for it, it will be postponed to the next financial year. In private sector, justify the cause. Calculate the cost-benefit analysis. The money will be available. Next, we are talking about procurement policies and procedures. And we're saying that in public sector, they tend to follow legislative directives. While in private sector procurement, policies, procedures tend to be organization specific. In public sector, we have the parliament that makes the laws. 
We have the PPDA, which is the body that monitors and supervises all public procurements in Uganda. Meaning that you cannot do anything outside what Parliament says it should do and what the PPDA guides. You can only work within the legislative frameworks. What does PPDA say? What does the Act say? What does Parliament say? We are saying in private sector, the policies and procedures tend to be organization specific, meaning everything is dependent on what the organization policy and procedures are. And it means that it differs from organization to organization. I hope we are still together. So what does the organization uh, policy talk about procurement? How does it differ from your neighbors? That is if they work. Let them tell you what differences there is. Then we are talking about the objectives. This one we already talked about it. And we are saying that in private sector, their major objective is usually profit. While in public sector, the major objective is to achieve disused service levels nationally. I'm not so sure about this one in the Ugandan case. Are we seeing uh, a national achievement of disused service levels? Why do we have um, different transportation networks in the country? Why do we have certain places having better education systems? compared to others. But anyway, that is a by the way. Government is supposed to achieve or give um, the same service levels nationally. So we should be seeing good road networks everywhere, not only in certain parts of the country. We should be seeing healthcare, you know, being provided at the same level, at, uh, in all parts of the country. So we can debate about this probably the whole day. Some of you might tell us, for us we have medicine, others might say we do not have, but I'll leave that at that. So what are the similarities? This is something interesting, that in as much as they have the differences, they still have the similarities. Now, this is the simplest way for you to get the similarities. From the differences, that is where you get the similarities. Because as a matter of fact, what we are going to look at as the similarities is something that is coming out from the differences. So the first similarity is they're all rules bound. Whereas the public sector procurement, the rules are carved out of the PPDA, the parliament, the, le the legislative arm of government. We are saying that in private sector, their rules are made by the organization itself. That's why we are saying a clear set of rules for all players in the private and public sectors do exist. So both have procurement procedures and audit policies to take into account, although they are more detailed in the public sector. By the way, all these NGOs or all these different organizations that they have, they carry out procurement audits, they have policies, they have procedures that they need to follow. Only that in public sector it is more stringent and it is more available to the general public. Two, we are saying public sector buyers may not be seeking to maximize profits but their prime objective is to achieve value for money and this is a strong motivating influence as the profit motive. Many times people will tell you government is not making profits or government does not provide the services to make a profit, but there's an element of it. And the element of profit maximization is not actually the profit, but it is value for money getting the best out of what procurement opportunity there is. So it means that in as much as we are saying that government is not out there to 
uh, achieve or to make profits, they are there to achieve value for money. And that is a strong motivating influence as the profit motive. Then we are saying that in both public and private uh, sector procurement, they all have objectives. One is probably looking at profit maximization, the other is looking at provision of uh, disused services to all citizens of the country. So we are saying that another similarity is in the area of customer satisfaction. Because the public sector buyer carries out procurement to satisfy the citizens, and the private sector buyer carries out procurement to achieve organizational goals or objectives. So it means that the government is out there to satisfy you and I. You and I are the citizens of the country. So we are government's objective. In private sector, they are looking at satisfying their clients or their buyers. Who are their buyers? It is government. Next, we are saying that there is a set of basic principles upon which the system is built in both public and private sector procurement. We shall look at these principles. In as much as these principles are more emphasized in public sector procurement, as a matter of fact, they cut across. So the principles will uh, vary from integrity, ethical behavior, confidentiality, economy and efficiency, etc., etc. These principles cut across and they apply both in public sector procurement and in private procurement. So we are saying that both have a procurement regulator. So who is the procurement regulator in the public sector procurement? And who is the procurement regulator in the private sector? We are saying that public procurement is regulated by the PPDA. By the way, in this course unit, we are going to talk about PPDA, PPDA, PPDA. Embrace yourself. But what I need you to differentiate is, when I talk about the PPDA, I am talking about the authority, the body. So we are saying that PPDA supervises or is the regulator of all public procurements in Uganda. And private procurement is regulated by organizational procurement laws. All private sector organizations have their procurement laws. What should be done, when it should be done, how it can be done, etc., etc. All that needs to be done. Then the other is we're saying that requirements to adhere to ethical behavior applies to both. What I find interesting is people talk about ethical behavior, ethical behavior, but what is ethical behavior? What is ethical behavior? I usually tell students, ethical behavior to me is what you do when no one is seeing you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are those things that you do when no one is seeing you? Now, we are saying that um, complying with the law, regulations, guidelines, acceptable business practices, contractual uh, conditions, are all measures of ethical behavior, which are emphasized both in private and public sector. What does that mean? That you must behave in a manner that is acceptable when carrying out business practices, when signing contracts, and when carrying out any procurement activity. My question is, when a supplier provides your organization with goods, and remember you are a public administrator, then they give you a brown envelope. 
In the brown envelope, there's about um, 500,000. What do you do? Don't laugh. What do you do? Or two, during the bid evaluation, a supplier pulls you aside and tells you, you know, my brother, I just wanted to give you lunch. And the lunch is one million. What do you do? Is that still ethical behavior? Okay, so we are saying that when we talk about ethical behavior, you should comply with the law, regulations, guidelines, acceptable business practices, contractual conditions, and all measures. How you conduct yourself during procurement activities. All those apply to both private sector procurement and public sector procurement. So what does that mean? That what we have here or what we have looked at is simply a summary of the differences and similarities of what public sector procurement is and what private sector procurement is. So I want you to go back to your groups, or just as we continue with the class. In Uganda here, what has government done? Or as a public administrator, what would you love to see change in public sector procurement? Or if you are in private uh, sector, what do you want to see change in terms of procurement because what we are going to cover next is we are going to look at the principles and I've already told you these principles apply to both public procurement and private procurement so what does that mean that as we go to the next class looking at the principles Let's look at the differences and let's look at the similarities and how do these principles apply to these two different sectors. Otherwise, thank you for this class and enjoy your day. So whatever has not been understood, please let's have a chat on our platform. Thank you.